Um, and I want to just transition a little bit um, uh, going forward. So now we're in a relationship and everything is established. Um, vacation, you know, is it something? Vacation, very, uh, you know, I'm not going with just my girls, but um, I want to go to London and I'm going with my, you know, with my boyfriend. What do you guys think about those boundaries and vacations and all of that stuff? Linda? <laughs> I'll give you my opinion and it's not about a being Christian or anything, it's just my personal experience. Um, so like when I met my husband, we're still dating, we were clear from the beginning that we are waiting for marriage before we have sex. And we were clear about our boundaries physically. And I think because of that, we were comfortable to go on a vacation. He took me to Franschhoek, we went out, and we had separate um, beds and stuff. But yeah, we had a good time and there was no issue. But I think it's because we were clear about our boundaries up front at the beginning. Lord, do not lead us into temptation. <laughs> yeah. But and deliver I'm not us from just evil. Us, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, can, Chidi. Can I, um, I just want to come in there is we're human. And I think um, the Bible says, take, don't think you are, take heed before you lest you fall. Don't think, don't think you're a superman or a superwoman. Nah, I can. All those people that backslide, they are just of the devil. Mm. No, I'm not. <laughs> Judas, Judas was with Jesus. Mm. He, he heard he was with God himself. Mm. Satan, that didn't think, he, Satan was the one ministering to God himself. Mm. So all I can say is, you know yourself. Mm. There is no doctrine. There is no church rule or kind. You know yourself. Mm. Look at yourself. Tell yourself the truth. If you think and you know within your heart, don't entertain it. Mm. Um, many people might even ask them, is kissing okay? Is this, that? You know yourself. Mm. Just look at it. If you know that by the time you kiss, you'll be lost and you are gone. Yeah. And then you have already, now you are repenting to God. Don't try. <laughs> Don't try to do that. Yeah. You understand? Don't try to. It's, um, or you say no. Um, you know that if you stay alone with this person, ah, yeah, yeah, the devil. Don't even, some people can go to a bar mm. and see a lot of drinks and they're not tempted to drink it. Yeah. But you know yourself that when you go there and there, there's gin, there's that, there's mm -hmm. that, you come out drunk. Mm -hmm. Don't even try. Yeah, okay. So what I'm saying is know yourself. You don't need anybody to tell you. Mm -hmm. As many as are led by the Spirit yeah. are what? Children. The children of God. Of God. Yeah. So what you do is you ask yourself, Jesus, Holy Spirit, train from within you. Mm. And ask yourself, can I, you talk to yourself. And I want us, as much as we're not making it a spiritual thing, we need to be spiritual. Mm. Ask yourself. And then talk to God. If you see it is not, leave it. Mm. Don't compare yourself with Linda. Mm. Because I'm not Linda. Don't compare yourself with Chidi. Yeah. We're not the same. Yeah. You, you, you understand where I'm coming from? Mm. And then I want to get into one topic we've not spoken about, where it talks about... A lot of times we pray only when we want to get married. Mm. Or you pray when you're now broke, when you need that breakthrough. Mm. Or you pray when you want to make a serious decision. I need to start practicing to hear the voice of God. You, you get what I mean? How do I know that person? It's not everybody that is a believer that is my wife. Mm. Mm. It's not everybody. God might say, I have something to do with Irene, but what is this saying I have to do with Irene? Maybe we have a mission to do together in Tanzania. Mm. Or there's an evangelism or something we need to create a charity. But it's not that we are husband and wife. Mm. So I, we need to also start learning to train to hear God's voice for yourself and practice on that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So when it comes to the critical thing, it is easy. Because when you're in love... Mm. 
it drowns out. <laughs> it's difficult to hear whether it's yeah. God speaking or yeah. yourself. Yeah. Um, thank you for that. And I'd like Lucia to just come into the conversation um, at this point in time. So, Lucia, you'll just explain a little bit of your story and the reason why we're bringing her in is that she's experienced dating and relationship in her younger years and then when she transitioned into marriage at a very later stage. When I was setting the scene, I said there's a lot of fear when it comes to, to dating and relationships and a lot of people doing it in secret because there's just this something that's just in the air. Um, and I remember a friend of mine uh, telling me that, oh no, we're expecting our second child. And I was like, how are people in their second kids and I don't even have any, <laughs> you know, at any, and I think the fear for me, then I needed to deal with that to say that, is the fear really because of fertility issues in my 40s, to a point that a lot of single women in their late 30s, they'll tell you that, the day I get married is the day I conceive. So I just want her to come into the conversation around that experience and all of that. So yeah, we're just transitioning a little bit um, on that. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Sure, yeah. Wow, okay, let me start you from the end first and then I'll take you to the beginning. So I, get, I got married when I was almost 40. So I'm sure that's daunting. A whole lot of you must be like, what? How old is she? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm way over 40 now. Okay, and then going back to the start, obviously um, I had decided I got early, um, I was privileged enough to get saved at an early age. I got saved at age 13, got to know Jesus, love Jesus. Um, and then I decided, you know what? I'm not gonna be in the dating game until I'm over 21. So I was very intentional about that. Any guy who approached me, I didn't even entertain it because that was just the decision I'd made. And so after 21, obviously, like Pastor said, you know, you start showing that, look, I'm available, you know. Mm -hmm. And so it, it happened that, yeah, some guys will come and then, but others you're like, ah, you know what, no, this is not it. There's a lot of transition that happens and maturity uh, because when I first started then, it was this thing like, yeah, it's gotta be ending more, like Chidi said, like others are like, yeah, it better be ending more, etc. But you start growing also, you start realizing the world is not exactly like as you think, or it's not like as the fairy tales that we've kind of had. So I've had to let go of certain fairy tales, certain beliefs that sure. were actually instilled mm. at a younger age. Mm. And you start actually understanding, what is it that I want? What is it that God wants for me also? And because I knew for me, um, I'm sorry that it's gonna be a bit long. I knew for me that I wanted to get married. One of the reasons was because I was born outside a wedlock and I didn't want that for my children. And I said, no matter what happens, I don't wanna have children outside a wedlock. So um, long story short, um, met some other guy towards 30 and then I'm like, yeah, things then really went pair ways. You know, when you pair shape, I mean to say, you realize like, while well, the guy's absolutely not what I thought and mind you one of the things I had said for myself was that I am not going to date outside of a Christian circle that was one of the things I was very clear anybody who's not born again I am not even considering them so that was one of the rules and I stuck by it but this guy I knew him from varsity thought he was saved thought everything was lo and behold it was the devil in <laughs> I'm sorry to be so crude. So I'm simple just saying, just because somebody has said they're saved, they love Jesus, and you've really seen them at church a couple of times, don't go blindly and mm. think that they are Jesus himself. No, they're not. They're still being transformed as you are being transformed as well as you are growing and maturing in Christ. So long story short, get to 30, and I'm thinking, ah, man, yeah, no, look, I should have been getting somebody who's like talking bells, wedding bells, what's going on? Sheriff, there he comes. Wow, nothing. I'm like, Lord, is there something wrong with me? You start wondering, you know, like, is there something wrong? Maybe there's something I, I don't see. I, look, I'm not the most beautiful woman, but I, I, I'm not ugly either, you know? Mm. So um, let's fast forward. 35 comes, nothing. 
And then I'm like, oh dear Jesus, yeah, no, this is, this is bad. <laughs> and I remember becoming desperate. And when you're desperate, guys, it's very dangerous. Yeah. I became desperate. I ended up in a relationship with a guy that I, I regretted, honestly, with all my life. I'm like, um, this is somebody who also loves Jesus. Mm. Yeah. They come to church, they pray in tongues and all that. So just going back to what Chidi was saying, not everybody then is meant to be your spouse. So after 35, I decided, or actually even just before 35, I decided, you know what? Let's just rest in the Lord. Mm. Let me enjoy being in the Lord, enjoy my life. And I literally had a break of four and a half years, not seeing anyone, not dating or whatever, anything. If we're just like talking, we're just talking and that's it. But no relationship whatsoever. And it's possible. And then I literally just rested in the Lord, but I started being more intentional talking to God now. I'm like, Lord, I want to be married. I do not want to stay single forever. That's one thing. And I started explaining also to God, why do I not want to stay single? Because my mother was not married and I want to break that cycle. I do not want that cycle to continue. I want to have children within marriage. So, and then I continued to pray to God and said, wherever Adam is sleeping, let him wake up. Mm. Mm. And then, yeah, it turns out he was sleeping. <laughs> That's a story for another day. But um, at the end of the day, I think when you are getting older, you have matured. So start reasoning really like a matured person. What is it that really you want? And more than anything, it's about pleasing God with your life. And that's what I started focusing on. And I think that's why also just before 40, that break actually happened for me because my focus was no longer just in like, I want to be in a relationship. I want to get married. I started shifting focus and I said, I want to please God with my life. But at the same time, Lord, these are my desires. I've not forgotten. Thank you. Thank you, Lucia. Woohoo! Awesome. I think um, just in, 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 in closing just this, this segment, and I'm hoping that you guys are also getting something from this, right? Yeah. Um, I want us to just touch a little bit on what if he was divorced? What if he's divorced? What if he's got kids? What if he comes with so many, uh, they call it the baggage, you know? What if he, he, he has all of these things? Um, then what? I'm, I'm single, I'm 36 this year, um, and people will tell me that, sure, Munewa, people have got history. And I was like, uh, Lord, you know, I've been, you know, keeping myself like this and, you know, help me in, 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 that, in that I get somebody as well that's not, you know, all of these things. So, ooh, so <laughs> yeah. she said damage, but no, 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 not, not, not like that, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I think maybe can I, can I just oh, start it and then I think the, the other panel can more respond to the specifics also just touching on the damaged uh, sort of uh, uh, comment I think what's important is that the like all of these questions about the person have to be connected to the deeper identity of the person mm. all these things are not identities they are fruits of life right mm. um, just because somebody's divorced it's not who they are right yeah. Um, they can be divorced and meet Jesus and their life changes completely, right? Mm. Um, they can be divorced as they were going through sanctification, they misunderstood something, things we don't know. Come right? on now. Uh, they can be broke, um, you know, but actually are redeemed and they love Jesus. Yeah. Um, so I think it's very important that we need to recognize the value of the identity of the person in Jesus, right? So good. Um, whoever Jesus touches, their value is way more, you know? Mm. I mean, their value is actually Jesus himself. He didn't mm. send like the leader important angel mm. in heaven and said okay we don't like you here in heaven anyway you should have gone with the devil when they all left right mm. we should have kicked you out to that group so you can go and save them no he sent his own son his one and only begotten son is who he sent to die for that divorced person for that person who has 16 kids uh, you know outside of marriage for that person who's in adultery right now, right? So I think it's very important that once a person encounters Jesus, they are not the same. Behold, mm. all things have passed away, right? Yeah. And there's something new has actually come. So I think we have to appreciate that deeper reality 
uh, and then of course at the same time there is practical considerations uh, that are also there. Obviously, you know, if somebody, you can have baby mama drama as we've seen in, in so many movies, right? Mm. There can be a toxic relationship um, that's there with uh you know with with, with the, the the former wife and and so forth uh there can be all those things that are also there as well mm. but i just wanted to kind of start it more with that kind of reality um that we have to see people not just according to the flesh uh, but also according uh to the spiritual reality that's there uh because otherwise it will always feel like uh you know this is not even God's best for me. And mm. then you are married, mm. but that's your confession. That's your statement. This is not God's best. I, I got the least, you know, I got the leftovers, mm. you know, and, sure. and so forth. Mm. Um, and, and, and I think there is that saying on social networks, like, let's be real, right? We're in our late 30s. We're yeah. going to get the leftovers sure. of someone else, right? Not um, my potion. That view, uh, <laughs> you know, I think that that view is definitely not yeah. spirit led. Yeah, uh, it's not from Jesus, right? Mm. It's 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 definitely you know uh, uh, demonic in nature. Uh, but anyway, this is not about you know uh, this kind of context. But also, then the last thing to to also um, you know just say is that we need to also learn to to date. Um, with Jesus, you know, to date with the Spirit. Like we need to actually be, I think our prayer mustn't just be, Jesus, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. It should just be Jesus, uh, you know, this guy is hot. What do you think? Yeah. Well, well, right? Yeah. What yeah. do you actually think, you know? Mm. Like he's so hot. Like he's a 10 out of 10, you know, yeah. that face is a 13 out of 10. Yeah. But what do you think, Jesus? Mm. What's your view? Mm. You know, and I think that kind of changes the, the, the dynamic significantly and our ability to discern improves as well because we are intently bringing Jesus into the conversation, not as I want to ask for, he must be 10, Jesus, give me a 10 out of 10, you must mm. meet me here. I, I, no, we're just saying Jesus is hot, what do you think? Yeah, right? that's good. Yeah, that's I good. think he's cute. Do you think he's cute too? Yeah. Right? Awesome. Um, and to actually have that mm. real relational conversation with him, mm. uh, I guess in a sense, although this sounds a little bit weird to say, but like treating Jesus like one of your girlfriends, right? Mm. Like there are things you will say to your girlfriends about this guy and get the advice and the input, but you won't say to the spirit, why? Yeah, that's We good. should be comfortable to that's actually good. have that kind of conversation and allow him to then say, this divorced person, no. Mm. But this one, I think is cute too. Amen. All right, I think, um, yeah, if we can just give it up. For our panelists, any last comment, Ayanda? And uh, yeah, so we're doing we're doing the last comment. Like I said, we'll have Q and A afterwards. So we've got part B that's coming. So we just want to transition to that. But any last comment? Very quick. <laughs> I think, I think uh, Evangelist and Mr. Mosu said it quite nicely, that you do need to be spiritual about, you know, it's, 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 we sometimes think that there's things that are not spiritual, but even this one, you know, just yeah. be led, be led by, be led by God, learn to listen to the voice of, mm. of God, and you'll find yourself sort of, into, mm. and be chilled about it. Mm. Don't panic about being single, it's, yeah, don't panic about it. Just, just chill. Thank you, Ayanda. Chidi, last comment? Um, I think for me it's um, don't be desperate. Your inheritance is God. Amen. God, Amen. God knows everything about you. Yeah. Um, don't make some, let nobody come to you and say, make a decision quickly, quickly. Mm. Uh, seek God, have peace and above all marriage is not the end game <laughs> marriage um, I don't know, I'm telling you marriage is work mm. <laughs> you think ah, I just want to just ask yourself again, remember when you were in secondary school high school, if I can get into varsity mm. then you get into varsity, Ish, if I can just get to work <laughs> Yeah. And start earning and get my own house and just get to live yeah. outside of my parents. That's the same way you're chasing the same money. You, when you get there, <laughs> there is work. Hmm. There is work. <laughs> and remember, you are going to meet someone that is totally different from you. Somebody that 
Somebody that you, you make the bed very well. He doesn't make the bed. <laughs> he just throws it off. Mm. Or he, he puts the toothbrush that way. Mm. Or, or you, you like to cook and you like a lot of chili. The person doesn't. Mm. There's so many things. It's, just a, it's still a process. It's still a journey. So tell yourself, God's intent is what I seek. Mm. And as many as are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. Let us learn to hear God's voice. Mm. Because I tell you, it says, if, if it were possible, the elect would have been deceived. That's to tell you that people can pretend. People can come and speak the good tongues, preach the gospel, do everything. But when you get married, you see the person is there. And not only that, people also change. Mm. So, learn to hear God's voice and practice it. Practice it in your daily step. You, Sometimes Jesus. you might discern something and you might see the discernment is not right. Mm. You just ask pastor, hey, I'm thinking this. Is it in the right direction? Like mm. I, something happened to me. I don't know whether it's right discernment. I called pastor. I said, this, I want to just learn what discernment of spirit is like. Mm. If I'm not right, I get guidance. Mm. Amen. And please, let's grow. Thank you. Thank you, Chidi. Lucia? It just on the last question, be open, whether it's somebody who's had, who has kids or a kid or somebody who's divorced, the most important thing is, as they've just said, know what is it that God is saying to you. Um, I'll make myself an example. My husband actually has a kid. I've got a stepdaughter of whom we have a beautiful relationship. Mm. Um, so especially for those who might be approaching like the age that I approached <laughs> to get married. Really, just really be open-minded because you do not want to just box all the people as damaged goods. Mm. And you might be surprised that you might actually miss your very treasure out of that box. And I have a treasure, trust me. Amen. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, in parting, I'd say that it's important to, to date in community. If you're dating, That's date good. in community. Yeah. Uh, we had a Connect Group member who got married um, not so long ago. Um, she came and introduced the boyfriend. In fact, she told us when she was going out on a date for the first time with the person. Oh, okay, tell us how it goes. And she mm -hmm. gave us feedback. And, you know, eventually we met the, the, the boyfriend and um, got introduced. We were out on a hike as a connect group. So brought the boyfriend along. We went on hikes, got to know the guy, um, you know, spend a lot of time with him. So it's important that there's accountability, there is transparency, someone who's able to, you know, in part, ask questions, yeah. you know, and uh, the moment it's done in secret, the enemy is also going to thrive yeah. in secret. <clears throat> All sorts of things are going to happen in secret. So it's important to do it openly and, and get the counsel of your leaders, get the counsel of, of your friends. Um, so, yeah, that's my parting shot. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much, guys. This was really awesome. Uh, we'll have a Q&A at the end of the session. Thank you.